When walking through the forest of knowledge, be careful not to go astray. Plato. Be honest, you thought that was a real quote, didn't you? Unfortunately though, I did make that up just like five seconds ago. But it's probably not unreasonable to assume that it was a real quote, right? I mean, for one, the quote seems like something Plato might say, and it's just vague enough to be philosophical. Like, what does the forest of knowledge even mean, right? But there's some other factors that might have made you believe in this quote. For example, I used a pretty similar format to when I do give quotes. Also, I read the quote in a pretty calm, normal voice. Maybe if I did an impression of Goofy, things might be different. And even though I'm a human just like the rest of you, when you go on YouTube to watch a video, you expect the information to be correct. There's this weird expectation of legitimacy, even if it's coming from some blue cartoon anteater. These other factors have nothing to do with the reasonableness of the quote, and yet it could be very persuasive. Factors like these may fall under what the philosopher Blaise Pascal calls imagination. No, not the imagination we thought about as kids, like in that movie Bridge to Terabithia, where the kids use that rope swing to escape to an imagined secret world. Then the rope breaks and the kid dies. Yeah, the thing was rated PG. Anyways, in this video, we're gonna be looking at this battle between imagination and reason, in the eyes of Pascal through his work in the Ponces. So let's start by trying to define imagination for Pascal. He doesn't give us a very clear-cut definition, that scoundrel. But from what I can infer, we might say imagination is purely mental beliefs that are often false. So for example, if I'm in class and daydreaming about being able to breathe underwater, that's a result of imagination, for now anyways. Now likewise, this might also include products of our mind that aren't so noticeable. For example, take glasses. For some reason, Many of us unconsciously equate glasses with intelligence. So if two people are in a debate and one of them is wearing glasses, that obviously doesn't guarantee a win, but it might be in their favor. Now Pascal thinks this faculty of imagination is present within each and every human. Imagination. It is the dominant faculty in man, master of error and falsehood, all the more deceptive for not being invariably so, for it would be an infallible criterion of truth if it were infallibly that of lies. So Pascal goes further in saying that it is the dominant faculty in man, that it is able to overpower reason. So how does this sound to you guys? I mean, yeah, I know. We all want to claim we're 100% reasonable and never influenced by such petty things like imagination. But if we understand Pascal's definition of imagination to be something similar to bias, then we can't really escape it, can we? Now with all this said, we might think of imagination as a bad thing. Like we want to be reasonable, we want to live in reality. But Pascal explains that imagination does have its benefits. Imagination cannot make fools wise, but it can make them happy, as against reason, which only makes its friends wretched. One covers them with glory, the other with shame. So the easiest example of this may be dreams. Good dreams to be exact, not nightmares. I have these nightmares about this old lady chasing me around with a large butcher's knife, and it really isn't much of a pleasant experience. But you know when you're a kid and you have that dream of just going wild in a Toys R Us? Now that right there is a happy experience, even if it was disconnected from reality. Likewise, when it comes to bias, this too might bring us joy. Like imagine having a dinner in a fancy restaurant with a cloth table and violin music, maybe even some candles. These things don't necessarily equate to good food. Your imagination is making that connection, and yet it could influence the way you perceive that food to taste in a positive light. Now on a more serious note, imagination also helps keep things in order. Who makes us respect and revere persons, works, laws, the great? Who but this faculty of imagination? All the riches of the earth are inadequate without its approval. Now Pascal's thoughts on law deserve its own video because they're super interesting. But long story short, he compares law almost like fashion. What makes up the law is what's socially in at the time. What the evolving standards of decency are to borrow Eighth Amendment case law language. But if the law is not so much a result of pure reason, but rather social norms, is there imagination at play here too? And this is not to say Pascal is some anarchist who wants to do away with laws, but on the contrary, he sees the role imagination plays in maintaining these laws and maintaining society, and he wants to keep them. He sees imagination as being beneficial in this regard. Imagination, socially speaking, is what upholds these institutions that gives us order. But I mean, look, if you're more politically inclined, you might say this is a bad thing, but the point still stands that imagination is crucial. Love or hate alters the face of justice. An advocate who has been well paid in advance will find the cause he is pleading all the more just. 
The boldness of his bearing will make it seem all the better to judges, taken in by appearances. Now before we cut this video off, I want to once again touch on this imagination versus reason battle, because I think it leads one closer to a path of humility, if you agree with Pascal that is. So Pascal gives the story of a philosopher, or how about we just call this person a really smart rational person. Now imagine this person is on a very wide plank above a precipice, and this plank is much wider than need be. The person is a hundred percent safe, and should reasonably think so. However, our imagination would get the better of us. It would freak us out and cause us to quickly get off that thing. That essentially is the power of imagination. Reason never wholly overcomes imagination, while the contrary is quite common. So what do you think? Are you more on the side of reason, or do you think imagination really is the dominant faculty of humanity? Anyway, I'm really enjoying the Ponces, or Ponce, I don't know, I'm not French, but I'm definitely more on Team Pascal than Descartes so far. Let me know if you want more videos about this guy, and if you got any value from this video, feel free to subscribe, like, and hit the bell button. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.